is Miss Monica McNutt could have figured that out and took a conversation and did something she has never done before. She not go. Listen to this. We talk about women's sports more, more than the more than first day. Stephen A. Respectfully, with your platform, you could have been doing this three years ago if you wanted to. We gotta wow. go. To, you wow. guys. So, 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 you, you know, you're my show? guy, but. Who does more for this? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Wow. Don't do that. I'm talking to you about the oh, power that you have. Okay. I'm talking okay. to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's, it's, All right. Let, let's, I got you're my guy, but I'm talking to you. Guys, I got guys, it. guys, 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 guys. I really you, you appreciate missed, my girl. But you've missed a lot of episodes of First Take. You missed a lot. Stephen, three years ago, you were not talking about the WF's level. Don't do that. Guys, 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 guys. You make it Stephen A. Point, Monica. Monica. Watch this, this is Indiana Fever game. So late in the third, Caitlin Clark poked the ball away from Kennedy Carter, leading to a fever bucket, and Caitlin's elbow appears to make contact with Kennedy while doing so, as she turns around and celebrates in Kennedy's face, and maybe even had a few words to say, which then, Lying ass bitch. then, but instead, the media is going to show this only. They're not going to show you how Caitlin Clark fouled her first. Caitlin Clark hit her in the eye with the elbow and hands. No, they're going to make her be the yeah, victim. That's yes, basketball. That's bull but Really strong pursuit of the offensive glass. And you see Alyssa's hand right there around her neck with her leg out. Man, that's that's kind of wicked. Right? I, 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 that they was they you was know. slamming Candace Parker yeah. to the ground when she was trying to do the statue yep. of so she first got yeah. in. Nobody. against you guys. It's her style that people fell in love with. So we're not you, you, we're not saying you bow down to her, but the fact that you got to take cheap shots lets you know like if you can't just play defense and stop her the way you want, the fact that you got to do things out of your character. If this is not your character. Then you are angry about the situation. I've been broke so many times. I don't want to believe. Mama say it's my fault. It's my fault. I wear my heart on my Now, this woman told no lies at all. Everything she said is clearly facts. And this goes to all the Caitlyn fans as well who don't even like us. Stephen A. Smith and ESPN were the main ones who failed to try to promote the league that is known as the WNBA. I'm not going to be fake here and act like it was so popular. But dudes like me will watch occasionally more than the average fans but these are groups of people who don't even watch the nba neither and she's proven a point stephen a smith has all these things to say they haven't been promoting the WNBA at all we watch more than those so-called new fans and i guess it's a good thing to bring new fans to the WNBA. but the problem is what kind of fans are you bringing to the WNBA? you're bringing a group of people who have nothing but hatreds in their heart towards the men and women who look like the WNBA players miss monica mcnutt could figure that out and took a conversation and did something she has never done before that absolutely shocked me that she did today that I totally and emphatically disagreed with, although I do love her to death. And I appreciate the great work that she does for me on First Take on ESPN and the great work she does for ESPN overall. I love Monica McKnight. But this is the first real disagreement we had. And since she brought it up on national television, I'm going to bring it up now. Now, with Stephen A. Smith saying this and uttering those words out, I do love her now, but I have to call her out. He's the same man who got rid of several other ESPN analysts, such as Jalen Rose. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to, but this is my alleged reasons that he is the one who helped get rid of Jalen Rose for Molly Quorum purposes, but we're not going to indulge into that. This man is going to get rid of this beautiful lady right here. 
Listen to me, guys. He is going to find a way and make up a reason, and you will no longer see Mrs. McNutt working at the ESPN offices anymore. Now, I do acknowledge Monica McNutt last name is wild, but she is beautiful. Not that it has anything to do with anything. She's confident and she stands on her principles and she's not afraid to keep playing this weird game that they're forcing all these women to do. Shout out to Elysia Duncan, who also called out this narrative that people is hating on Caitlin Clark. Is she a superstar and the greatest of all time or is she just another caring victim? What's also scary is I just wanted to insert this part of the video. It's that Caitlin Clark was the one who initiated contact with Shenna D. Carter. Pay attention to this clip right here that the likes of Stephen A. Smith doesn't even want to talk about. Nor he wants to talk about Angel Reese getting hit in the neck. I didn't hear no outcry from the media. Same media. No. Soccer team. This is just Indiana Fever game. So late in the third, Caitlin Clark poked the ball away from Kennedy Carter, leading to a fever bucket. And Caitlin's elbow appears to make contact with Kennedy while doing so, as she turns around and celebrates in Kennedy's face, and maybe even had a few words to say. Which then. Man, ass bitch. Now, instead of Stephen A. Smith holding Caitlin Clark responsible for her record-breaking turnovers lack of consistent play let's just be honest about it he rather talk about the business side of things basically telling these women to just lay down and allow caitlin clark to be better be good and be the greatest of all time even if they have to force it girl milk it now it's just an opinion albeit a rising tide raises all boats if Caitlin Clark is the quote unquote savior, if she's the golden girl, milk it. Now, for everyone who keeps projecting and pretending that ESPN is not the one who created this race situation, but Stephen A is going to bring it up again, proving me correct. And let's get it out the way. You couldn't force these people to be racist. These people who follow Caitlin Clark felt this way since the beginning of their birth. It's in the blood when it's that deep. Don't kid yourself. But this girl that comes away from college, comes, in comes out of college rather, who happens to be white, who's already making buku dollars, the average, the, the, average the, the, the maximum salary in the WNBA is 250000 if I remember correctly, Caitlin Clark signed a $28 million endorsement deal. Well, nobody in the WNBA getting that. Nobody's gotten that yet but her. I mean, it's fair to say that Caitlin Clark generates this money because the people who look like her don't have a problem supporting her more over someone else. And this is facts. You prove Monica McNuck correctly. You going out your way to promote Caitlin Clark, but you had the platform to promote Asia Simmons and all these other great basketball players and you choose not to. Not only does Stephen A. Smith proves Monica McNutt assessment correct about him, but he's going to use his time on his own platform to continue the narrative that these melanated women are hating on Caitlin Clark out of pure jealousy only when it's really because of the media platforms like Stephen A. Smith that continues to dismiss them and backhand compliments left and right. So when I go on national television, and I bring up jealousy, envy, resentment, or whatever, I'm not saying it's not justified. If you are a WNBA player and you resent Caitlin Clark, it makes perfect sense. Because she's white and she's the golden girl that's considered the marketing savior for the sport. In this next segment, Stephen A is going to go in even more about the women shouldn't play rough with Caitlin Clark, all because she's making money for them and she's getting fame. So they basically should lay down for her. Some of the players, you want to use the word jealousy, fine. You want to use the word envy, fine. You want to use the word resentment. We want to play with words. That's cool. It's something. And I think that some of the ladies, not all, 
But some of the ladies in the WNBA are missing the point. And the point is, this girl right here is a box office attraction. And because of her box office attraction, it's generating more eyeballs to the WNBA product, therefore more revenue. For now, the good brother Kay and Martin on Gilbert Arenas is going to call out Gilbert Arenas simply by just saying that Caitlin Clark needs to defend herself. It's one thing for us to call out her teammates like Matt Barnes wanted to do and cape for Caitlin Clark. But it's another thing when we tell superstars need to stand up for themselves. We've seen the same media such as ESPN ridicule the likes of Blake Griffin and Nikola Jokic and they told them to attack back defend yourself but yet with caitlin clark they refuse to do so she's you the can't victim keep cheeks, man. Uh, i ain't saying you gotta go out there and be like try to hurt nobody caitlin, caitlin get game. But, <clears throat> so matt said her teammates need to stick up for her right mm -hmm. heard matt over the weekend like where the fuck are our teammates and stand the third woo -woo -woo. i get that mm -hmm. to a certain degree because we're in this together i understand that but caitlin needs to stick up for herself first and foremost now, I'm not going to lie to you. Monica seems the more seasoned analyst than one Stephen A. Smith. He's proving the same people he's defending who don't even like him, who spew certain stereotypical things towards Stephen A. Smith, and yet he's going to get it wrong with the whole Caitlin Clark thing. I like what Monica says here, how she's going to agree with me that uh, Shenity uh, Carter was wrong for what she did, but it's not because people are trying to attack Caitlin Clark. Notice Stephen A. Smith and them are trying to build a narrative of a can uh, basically a uh, Emmett Till Karen situation. Successful and productive. So this is not a good look from Carter. I will give you that. But the larger story, Greeny, that the WBA needs to be protecting Caitlin Clark and that she's being uh, targeted at an intense level negates the rookie experience in a league with the very best players. So Monica is going to touch up on another key point about this Caitlin Clark victimization and professional victim. She's going to bring up how Angel Reese was chopped down in a worse similar way and Angel Reese didn't complain about it. She chopped it up to Angel being a rookie and Angel admitted to this. And the same thing with Cameron Brink when one of the NBA veterans outdid her. Cameron Brink didn't run to nobody for support. She chalked it up to being a rookie. So why is the media defending Caitlin Clark aggressively? Yeah are following her alone. But Greedy, we could roll off years of clips of rookies in the WNBA having to hit their rookie curve. Her own classmate in Angel Reese had a collision with Alyssa Thomas, who was one of the most physical players in the, in the game of basketball. And she wisely chalked it up to ultimately, I am competing against grown women. Cameron Brink has talked about Tina Charles, cutting her up and actually outperforming her as an established veteran in this league. And so yes, this particular play, you don't love it, but you got to understand that is less about Caitlin Clark and more about who Kennedy Carter has been and continues to grow. Now, what's even more uncomfortable was a Mayo Nation white male who came to me in the comment section and he said, your channel is disturbing. So this is a gentleman who passed through a comment section riddled with racist stuffs on all these videos pertaining to Caitlin Clark, whether it's on MSN Messenger, whether it's on IG, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, it doesn't matter, Twitter. These comments are everywhere and you can't pretend not to see it. So this gentleman say my channel is disturbing because I'm protecting people in my community. I'm defending people in my community from people calling them thugs, calling them gorillas, monkeys, criminals. And I'm the disturbing one, but not all the people who's calling people who look like me all this rhetoric. And this is why I'm telling you the most dangerous people you will ever come across is a male person who who loves to throw around and say that you're the one using the race card, not them, not people around them, but you are the one using the race card. These lying, low, self-centered people are the most wickedest people that you'll ever come across in this world, purely and mainly vagabonds who have walked this earth. Now, Brandon Jennings will comment on it and tell her, welcome to the league, Rook. That's how he felt about 
Carter and Clark situation. Real basketball players and hoopers and real NBA fans and WNBA fans, we don't make excuses. You know, but I have to ask you guys, what are your thoughts on this incident involving Kennedy Carter and Kayla Clark? Welcome to the league, Rook. All right. Welcome to the league. Yeah, and Reese going through the same thing. Most yeah. rookies go through it. Welcome to the league. This and you guys know all weekend, Shannon Sharp, Stephen A. Smith, Charles Barkley, include the fake thug, Matt Barnes, who can't even keep his wife. But we know the main court jester has been Gilbert Arenas, and now he turned into a Karen, and talking about the vocal tone of these melanated sisters is pure jealousy. I think they think our eyes don't work. Right? I, we can see the, how you're talking about her in an angry tone lets us know you're angry about it. So with Gilbert Arenas being the skilled professional, you would think he knows this is what rookies have to go through. If you look at him and what he said over past times, he had his rookie initiation, including hazing, but yet he's going to twist this and do what the Mayo Nation does and subject the WNBA players to nothing more than thugs and brutes who are trying to hurt Caitlin Clark. It's not that they're trying to play rough defense on the greatest American player ever, like any other leagues and sports such as baseball, hockey, et cetera, et cetera. No, he's going to attach it also with this stereotypical thing aimed towards melanated people. But some people shit is changing, that. no matter if you like it or not, <laughs> right? No, You can hit her all you want right now. The league itself is gonna change it for them, right? When now, to prove Gilbert Arenas is doing pretty much like Shannon and Stephen A. Smith and Matt Barnes, they're trying to protect their assets and brands by catering to the larger community, which would be white Americans. So what he is going to do here is diminish the worth of Isaiah Thomas just to defend Caitlin Clark. He's going to talk about Isaiah is wondering why he didn't get chosen for the Olympic team even after 30 years. It's because of the Jordan rules and the rules were changed for Jordan. But we all know Isaiah and everybody knew it was Jordan who kept him from the team day one. So why would Gilbert Arenas lie about Isaiah being clueless? He did, yes, right? He did. And who got penalized? You. Mm. 30 years later, you're still wondering why you didn't make the USA team. <laughs> that, him right here, he's the reason. Yeah. The golden goose. Right. When he was like, hey, how, we want, uh, how about Isaiah but, Thomas? Hell no. It's next, right? You gotta so Josiah is going to bring a great point about the Angel Reese situation. Pay attention to Gilbert Arenas. The entire Gilbert Arenas crew and staff are paying attention to how Angel Reese's getting foul was 20 times worse than Caitlin Clark. And notice when the men are looking at this, they all had the same reaction except for Gilbert. We wonder why. So, so Brandon, we talked, uh, you, you mentioned Angel Reese. So we got that clip of yeah. Angel Reese uh, with Alyssa Thomas during the Sky Sun game, going up for a rebound. Yeah, welcome to the league. Well, to the neck area that caused Angel Reese to fall over. But what'd so, she get for that though? A flagrant two and ejected from the game at that point. Damn, so Kennedy Carter was initially throat. given a common foul, got upgraded that's to a flagrant crazy. one yeah, with a play throat. on Caleb oh, Clark. Yeah, 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 that's crazy. So. Now, one person who can't stand the hypocrisy of Caitlin Clark being a victim is Nick Young. He's going to call out Gilbert Arenas, his friend. He's going to tell Gil, but you guys did the same thing to me. Why is it different for Caitlin Clark? Why is everybody keep protecting this woman who hasn't won anything at all? Oh, but the entity Super got a ball, man. She got a ball out, too. She can't yeah. just get protected for no reason. And LeBron came in. And LeBron came in. His own teammates was like, man, he, this high school kid ain't yeah, better yeah. than me. And, we're, and all, then he started all, feeling it. All, all of them was going to be all good. Everybody yeah. shut the oh, fuck man. up and stay in line. Weren't on the team man. in that LeBron year. LeBron came man. out flying were, and were they, know. What I'm saying is, were they on the... Were, she either going to be Jimmy for that or goddamn got down to the third. They ain't going to be that. They, what they said is, they keep lying. What I'm saying is, they said they going to let... Gilbert is going to dance for the sponsorship money again, and he's going to be like a court jester towards 
Nick Young. Instead of Nick Young losing his cool and screaming and yelling like Gilbert loves, loves to do, he's going to bring up a key fact as to why Caitlin Clark is not a victim. And this is not unheard of for a rookie to go through this type of initiation, S especially since the media and the world called her the greatest ever. So they're going to protect her. They don't Everybody have respect for her. Everybody that came in from that college to shoot the threes and all that March Madness stuff, they get tested soon when they come yeah. in. And people don't like, like, niggas didn't like Jimmy. They didn't like JJ. They didn't like Steph at first. You're going to get tested no matter I just where. Think now, what was cringe about this was the fact that even someone like Cynthia G, I don't agree with everything she says, but she is correct about melanated brothers not protecting black women they go out their way to cater to the same system that they claim they're fighting against just to get a taste for what that system can offer to them because pay attention to shannon sharp here he has been passionately against anything that has been outside of who caitlin clark is he never stood in defense of the angel reese's of the world or any of these other females who have been going through all this in the beginning i got clips of shannon sharp talking about physical contact is needed in basketball is too soft all of a sudden he's attacking his own women including monica mcnutt pay attention to this scene right here of tap dancing don't do that. Guys, 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 guys. Are you ready? Monica, you make a Stephen A. Point, Monica. Monica, you make a Stephen A. Point. First of all, the victory. That's basketball. That's bull jive. That's bush league. Now, you woman enough to check the woman, and she ain't got the ball, but you ain't woman enough to answer questions? Yeah, and you wonder why? I don't, I don't give a damn situation. Right. You're jealous. Bigger that was a bush league play, and it needs to be addressed. That was a flagrant foul. That right. was unnecessary. Flagrant anything deemed to be unnecessary. Mm. I need somebody to explain to me why was that necessary. This is true. Yeah, y'all know you're clapping house niggas ain't clapping scared, but listen. This came. You can't get over what you just witnessed. That is Shannon Sharp exhibiting a level of what Cynthia G was talking about. Now, Cynthia G is foul for many things she say about black men but like i was taught when i was growing up if it don't apply let it fly i was taught not to pay attention to what's going on in the beauty salon but what she did say is correct is men like shannon sharp and also these brothers in the cop i mean uh, comment sections trying to behave in a way to accept a certain treatment just to enable themselves to get receives benefits such as the way Tyreek uh, Nasheed likes to say trinkets and butter biscuits and Shannon Sharp is eating a lot of butter biscuits that his grandmama cooked up for him. This Kangs because that blame the black woman talk only works with other Kangs. Other races of men will call you out on your bullshit immediately and every other race can see that these kings have failed black women these kings have failed their children have failed each other have failed their communities and because of their failure and their unreliability and their evil vile violent ways black women have been forced to adapt in order to survive the great sister Shahrazad Ali, she warned us about black men who behave like this. She also held black women accountable. And she actually has more videos talking and condemning the way black women behave. But she said something to me that hit me well. She says you have to be careful with the other nation's daughters because they will adapt to you and act and become Judas amongst you at the same time while pretending to be your friend. Because we all seen the video, if you rewind it, Caitlin Clark actually was the one who started the trouble not only she was the one who initiated the contact all i want you guys to do is rewind this very video that you're watching right now and go to the beginning i highlighted where she actually was at fault in fact let me show you right quick before i continue there's a reason behind the madness of this right here 
watch this. This is Indiana Fever game. So late in the third, Caitlin Clark poked the ball away from Kennedy Carter, leading to a Fever bucket, and Caitlin's elbow appears to make contact with Kennedy while doing so, as she turns around and celebrates in Kennedy's face, and maybe even had a few words to say, which then... Well, now that you just seen video proof and evidence that all the medias and the fake Caitlin Clark fans who really hate us haven't even shown you guys, the media still didn't even bring up the elbow and laughing at Mrs. Carter's face. No, Carter is just a monster. She's just a thug. And what's weird is I used to respect Caitlin Clark because she knows she has racist fans. I liked it when she didn't embrace their hatred but as far as her own fans hatred towards women who play with her now what she's going to do after this indiana fever game is pretend like she doesn't know why carter pushed her it's not back ball. basically playing the perfect role of karen towards this situation the dynamic of this is no difference between the likes of an emmett till situation or a rosewood situation like what happened in florida pay attention protect here's what caitlin had to say about that moment yeah that's just not a basketball play but um you know got to play through it that's what basketball's about at this level yeah i wasn't expecting it but i think it's just like just respond come down let your play do the talking it is what it is um it's a physical game um go make the free throw and then execute on offense and i feel like that's kind of what we did but you know it, it is what it is i guess I it is what it is you know i feel like i'm just at the point where you accept it um and don't retaliate like you know just let them hit you be what it is don't let it get inside your head um and know it's coming i think at this point like i know i'm going to take a couple hard shots a game and that's what it is just, just stay in the game and stay in what's important <laughs> Now, you all know Elijah Duncan from ESPN. She was the only one brave enough more than the weak Shannon Sharp, weak Stephen A. Smith to speak on this situation and single-handedly dismantle this narrative of everybody is trying to hurt Caitlin Clark and blah, blah blah you feel me so she breaks it down correctly and she brings up the key points as to why we love her in the first place because now shannon sharp yesterday called her out he didn't call her out by name but he did say you know that person who works with us my colleague who said they're only trying to just play back ball and shannon sharp is weak so to all you people who claim that these people don't go after women shannon sharp absolutely goes after melanated women and he doesn't hold male women accountable players. tired of it it just makes no sense to me and i'm tired that we keep giving it so much energy and i'm tired of it being people who are not in this circle or yeah. space at all who suddenly have all these opinions about how these women need to treat caitlin clark what do you want from them they want to beat her because she's not on their team isn't that how it's supposed to be? Y'all yeah. stop it. We already know she's transformational. They've all said it. How many times do they got to say it? <laughs> so tired of it. It just Now, this gentleman who I'm going to play his video, he said something right about the likes of a Shannon Sharp or whatnot and if it don't apply to you let it fly because what we can't stand is the comment section trying to play a narrative and think we're gonna fall for it no we're just gonna skip past you and continue with regularly scheduled programming now without further ado all you step infections need to hear this actual medicine longest time even though these kings have abandoned black women and left black women a long time ago these kings have been the greatest enemy to black women and black women still try to hold on to them because black women value the black family. They value and love their blackness. Today's black women is a result of black men's failure. Look, y'all, I'm DJ Bless One, the best one. Love your family and love your kids and stay blessed. I do these videos to bring up a point in the segments of these arguments and I bring the receipts so they can't be refuted no matter how emotional your feelings and opinions that are. 
that's there to be you feel me regurgitated no we're here to rebuttal the nonsense that's out there and at the end of the day Stephen A. Smith has proven to be the greatest enemy to the black man and the black woman and Gilbert Arenas has proven to be the greatest Judas to anybody that looks like him as long as there's time to get a sponsor so for Gilbert Arenas to diminish Drea a black woman in front of the world but to cater to Caitlin Clark to a certain segment love your family Family, love your kids and stay blessed this is something that we're used to we've seen this over the years and it would not end anytime soon this is what you have when you have a career in being a pro ganaster i just made up that word meaning a pro instigator that's nastier than the subconscious of the mind meaning that gilbert arenas which i have respect for the show because of the other people on there but gilbert arenas lost my respect when i've noticed he's willing to say anything just like he protected lebron james yet another player he'll diminish their worth and value because whoever has a situation that can benefit him that's who he's here for no if and buts about it you can get mad at what i'm saying but I clearly have a level in my heart that I care about many people out here and that can't be refuted love your family love your kids definitely stay blessed peace <laughs>